Hello and welcome to Square Tech Academy. In today's video we are going to look at some machine learning basics and why you should learn machine learning and what kind of types there are within machine learning and why you should care about these types. So the first one, why should you learn machine learning? I have tried to list three of the reasons why I think that machine learning is relevant for almost every software engineer looking for a new skill to learn. The first one is it enhances almost any application. So if you are into software engineering or just getting started in your programming career, you more or less know that machine learning is now implemented in almost any modern application or system out there. Whether it, face, it is Facebook, news applications, messaging apps and so on, there are some kind of machine learning implemented in order for the companies to enhance your experience and making the application more applicable to you as an individual instead of making it more general. So by knowing machine learning you are capable of using the exact same algorithms and enhance your own applications making it more suitable for the users that is hopefully going to use your application. The second reason is that big companies are in need of experts. There are not many experts within the area of machine learning compared to programmers who know for example the Java programming language. So by learning machine learning and be able to apply algorithms to a given context you are a big step ahead of the ordinary programmer or software engineer who only knows how to program for example Java or Node.js because machine learning is without doubt the future. So by knowing machine learning you will be in high demand by companies all around the globe. And the third reason is similar to the second one. You are able to join a big company or make some application yourself and thereby developing the future. Where we before saw that areas got changed when the computer were invented or social <coughs> sorry or social life were drastically changed when Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and so on came along. We are now seeing that machine learning are changing industries again because machine learning will take a given area up to a whole new level. This could be self-driving cars, it could be drone delivery by Amazon and all kind of different areas are now seeing new possibilities because of machine learning. So by learning machine learning you can take part of that development and thereby join hopefully the future of applications out there. So what types of machine learning are there? We have three main types. We have the unsupervised learning, we have supervised learning and reinforcement learning. These three types are key to know when talking about machine learning because each of these types have different algorithms underneath them and each of them is suitable for a given uh, data and in a given context. So you need to know each of the, these three types, what algorithms they, they are underneath them and in what context given the data that you can apply them. Because if you have a context where possibly reinforcement learning is the best choice and you try to use unsupervised learning, you might get very poor results because the algorithm that you implemented is not suitable for either the context or the data that you have available. So you need to know when you are using a different type and why you should implement it in that given context. So let's dig into the three types. So let's start here with the unsupervised. We will draw a little like so. So let's say that we have some data points as input to our uh, algorithm. So if we have unsupervised learning we will have some data points in a graph like this and it could look like so. So we have some points here and here and probably some points here and maybe a point right here. So when we're talking about unsupervised learning we don't know anything about the data meaning that it is not labeled. So if we take emails for example and we want to make a prediction on whether a given email is spam 
or not spam if we have <coughs> sorry if we have labeled data we would know that this email is spam or non spam but when we have non labeled data we just have a whole bunch of emails and we really don't know which of them is spam and which of them is is real emails so if we have unsupervised learning and this is our emails what our algorithm will try to do is to cluster these together meaning that it will look and see okay which of these could uh, be similar to each other so it will probably say okay these right here oh let me just change this color so it will probably say these right here these two seem similar to each other because they are placed very close to each other based on the the parameters that we have in the graph and these are probably also in a given cluster and then depending on the parameters of the algorithm it will either say it as a whole cluster or it will try to divide it such that we have like one cluster here and one more here it really depends but for the understanding of unsupervised it is not uh, a big deal so when we get a new data point for example when we implement the algorithm and we ask it to predict based on a new email that we have just been given we are probably seeing an email which look like this so what our algorithm will try to do is to see okay now that I have this new email I really don't know if it is spam or not but what I will try to do is to see does this fit to any of the clusters and which one of them is closest to given on the parameters and this is just by eye measure but it will probably say that it is either closest to this one right here or this one up here so if you just say this one up here it will say that this new email is similar to the emails right here and that will be our prediction for that given email and remember that our algorithm still don't know what is spam and not spam because it is not told so it is just making predictions based on similarities between the different items so this was a short introduction of unsupervised where we have no labeled data if we then have supervised learning we will delete this right here when we have supervised learning our algorithm is told what is what and our data is labeled meaning that if we take emails again we will have the real emails in green so this could be for example like so and then we have the spam emails which is also labeled and I will just draw them with a circle so like so so here we have some labeled data in our graph and when we have supervised learning what our algorithm will do is to make a linear uh, relation between this linear regression so instead of dividing these into clusters as we saw before where we will probably say that this could be a cluster <coughs> and this could and maybe this one and then this will either be a cluster for itself or be part of this one but who knows but instead of doing that what supervised learning is trying to do is to find a cut between these so it will either do so like pick a straight line where it will see that most of uh, the emails on this part is real emails even though we have one right here and all the emails on this part is spam emails so when it sees a new email it is very easy just to put that into the uh, graph so if it end up on this side it is a real email whereas if it ends up on this side it is classified as a spam email so this is l linear a regression we can also have something called logistic regression and supervised learning where we still have our data right here but let's say just to make it a bit more complex that we have 
a real email right here. So when what we're doing here is that we try to train the model to fit as close as possible. So instead of having a linear line, we could have a line that goes like so, and then maps it like this, because we have this one positive here and the negative right here. And based on the parameters and what kind of algorithm you use, you can get really close uh, to making a perfect fit given on your label data. But then you will have other problems because your model will be uh, too specific for the training data, meaning that when you start to see real examples, you will uh, make prediction mistakes and so on, but that will be for a later lecture. So this was short about what is unsupervised and what is supervised and what labeled data is versus non-labeled data. So if we take reinforcement learning as the last step, we will be deleting this right here and then we will be drawing a little uh, model right here. So in reinforcement learning we have a agent agent and we have a environment and we will just call that E and V for environment. So for an, an example is uh, a chess game where the chess game is our environment and the agent is our uh, algorithm that is trying to learn uh, to play chess. So the agent is giving uh, given set of actions that it can perform like moving different pieces and so on so we will draw that with like like so so this is actions I hope you can read uh, what I'm <laughs> trying to write here so it has some actions and then based on these actions this environment is going to react and how it's going to do so, it is to provide the agent with information about a possible reward. Okay, that was a very terrible, but reward. And also what state uh, the agent is currently in based on the action. So, if you take a piece of chess, then our agent who want to win this uh, game of chess. When using reinforcement learning, our agent will do a trial and error approach, try to move different pieces. And give, based on uh, the moving uh, pieces and uh, in what uh, place on the board the piece will be moved, the environment will tell our agent uh, whether this move gave a, possible, uh, a positive score or a negative score. So did this move uh, made us win or lose the game? And that is basically our reward. So if we make a given action and we get told that this action made us lose, then we know, okay, this was a bad move. We should probably not do that again. But if we get told, okay, this was a good move, you are now winning, then we know that, okay, we are now winning. This was a good move. We are now in this state. Let me try uh, move another piece or this same piece so we move the same piece again take our action our environment now tells us that this was a bad move we are now losing the game so this was a bad move so instead of moving the same piece the agent will probably try to move another piece so we make this action moving another piece we are now getting told we are again winning and so on and so forth we are looping uh, back and forth between the environment and the agent through this trial and error approach where we are looking at the reward based on the actions we take and what state we are currently in. So this was a very simplified version of reinforcement learning. Later in this uh, tutorials uh, course I will get into how you can implement different algorithms uh, for each of these three types but I hope that you understand the, the basic uh, uh, principles of the three types and then I will see you in the next video.